Uh, welcome to our virtual art show, Nostalgia Pop. So we, rather than, um, you know, Sean is in Kansas and I'm in Florida, so a lot of the times it's hard to create exhibitions and put everyone together, you know, creating a solid exhibition can be a month to six months in advance, but the beautiful part about these virtual art shows is we can curate a show, come together, bring artists from all over the world and engage and have conversation. Um, and then much like being in a gallery space when you walk in, instead of being there physically, you have the same experience virtually. And that's what's really exciting about this technology today and all the things we'll be able to do no matter where we are around the world. Um, and I'm really grateful to have Sean with me all the way from Kansas. I'll be seeing him in a show later this month, but uh, for now, let's get started. He's gonna, uh, he curated the show, so he's gonna go through, talk about each artist's work um, and uh, why he, what, how it relates to the theme, which is nostalgia. All right, so uh, nostalgia pop, uh, I was uh, going over the uh, statement a little bit before, but to uh, repeat it, it's uh, every person has memory of something that brings them joy, whether that's old and worn out new and made up or in the moment of the present day this uh, exhibition actually paired 14 artists that each provided a perspective on the unreal the bright the pop that is the cerebral or essence of our memories and i didn't really uh give them any information as to what the theme was i just chose specific works that really connected to that in my eyes and uh yeah, so it's like the world, it's constantly filled with these memories and visions of uh, the past, the present, the future, whatnot. And uh, these these memories are captured by these artists and they really inspire what's going on now in the moment. Um, and this collection of paintings and one digital work slash photograph just uh, really reminded me of how uh, history has been and just how like the painting movements have really shaped what so many different artists are doing in the pop art movement today. So hopefully that uh, explains it a bit. That's awesome. So let's get started uh, with the first work. So I'm gonna zoom up and then you can tell us who the artist is, a little bit about the work and why you selected it for the, for the theme. Perfect. There you go. Takes a minute to load. Do you do you see the first one? Yeah. Yeah, so that's uh a work by Brianna Vanacoro out of New York. And uh, the title's called Andy. It's uh, just, uh, she does these uh, fragmented pieces based on a process she learned from her grandmother. And it's about how, like, the world shatters. And, like, the people's memories is always there. It's just not perfect. It's really sharp and edgy. And I've personally shown probably, I think, like eight or nine of these. And I love them to death. That They're really, cool. really awesome. So uh, and you said it's titled Andy, like Andy Warhol? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. What's her connection with um, Andy Warhol? Just uh, admiration or? Oh, yeah. I mean, he was one of the uh, earliest players in the pop art movement. Uh, my personal connection to him is his process of creation because it wasn't really about spending months dwelling on a single piece. It was about creating pieces in the moment and just releasing them to the public and really making something so simple like his soup can or anything like that mm -hmm. so much more complex. Yeah, and that really is fitting with the pop part of the show. It's a very, like, it's got a lot of pop art influence. And um, I thought it was really cool, the geometry. What's the medium on this work? 
uh, it's oil paint on canvas. Oh wow, that's awesome! How what's this dimension? So just to let everyone know, the for this show, the dimensions aren't to scale. So if you want to just tell us what the dimensions are. Yeah, this piece it's uh I believe it's eighteen by twenty four inches. That's a good medium size. That's a great work. And what's her schooling? Or is she just a? Uh, is she oh, self taught? I, I know she went. She graduated with a BFA in uh, art, okay. and she's uh, lately. Uh, gosh, what has she been doing? I've seen her do a lot of teaching courses, and she does a ton of murals and commissions of uh, family members and uh, pets and all that. Yeah. But this movement was from uh, about a year ago when she was doing a long string of celebrities. That's no, it's a really strong piece. It's uh, I enjoy it. The 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 hair kind of looks like like palm trees almost. It's very got a characteristic to them. Yeah, and like the one of the main reasons that I like it too is the hair itself. It reminds me of uh, diamond facets and like that whole hologram movement last year that was so popular. Yeah. Yet it has no uh, no effects to that nature. It's just pure pigmented color. That's insane. She's a colorist for sure. Yeah. Um, okay, let's go to the... If no one has any questions on this one, we'll go to the next piece. This is exciting. Ooh, sorry. It's like I'm remote controlling this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Donald Duck. Yeah, so... Uh, there you go. All right, so this piece is by Matt Reeves, which he's from Wichita, Kansas. And it's, uh, I believe it's called Angry Donald Duck, which uh, it's similar to a piece by another artist, but Matt always really makes the piece his own. Mm -hmm. And it's all, the background is spray paint, acrylic paint on top of that. And he, lately he's been using a lot of iridescent mediums as well, sorry, um, to really make it stand out even more. But this piece, uh, I mean, everyone remembers ch children with tantrums all the time. <laughs> yeah. And it's little aspect of not getting any interactions on social media. It's it's just great. Everyone always gets annoyed when they don't get, when they're not the most popular kid on these platforms, I guess you could say. Not that it really affects anything in the uh, real world. Yeah, but, but that's interesting. Once again, nostalgia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how like you know, pop like the popularity of being in the schoolyard is even like tan. It's, it's you know focused in social media, kind of how everyone's desire, if they're not careful, is that like and. You know, it's a very interesting uh, thing on society and how we are with our you know social media profiles. Yeah, I mean, social media has really influenced so many people these days, even in the art world. It's one of the uh, most efficient ways to share your artwork, yet the uh, the people running all the social media platforms have so much control over it. Yeah, that's true. So it's like, um, and, and uh, it is a, this is a fun one, though. It's kind of just, you know, funny in general about the, you know, the the conversation that we're having. What's the, you said it's acrylic, spray paint, and then what's the uh, the duck? Is it oil or is that acrylic? Uh, so the background, I, I believe it's predominantly acrylic and spray paint, and then the duck in the foreground, it's all acrylic paint. Yeah, that's cool. And sometimes I believe he has dabbled a bit in oil, but I could be wrong with that. I know this piece specifically is predominantly acrylic. <laughs> that's cool does anyone have any thoughts on this one or um can you you guys can still hear sean right i just want to make sure because sean's taking us through the show and he's talking about the artwork and the selection for this show um i just want to make sure you guys can hear us both yeah and uh, another thing i didn't mention is this piece is uh, 18 by 24 as well okay and do you have that in your gallery uh, no, we did for a while, but uh, right now we don't. Okay. And where is he located, Matt? 
uh, in Wichita, Kansas, okay. where the gallery is located. Awesome. So he's a local artist. Yo. Very cool. Someone uh, commented, uh, background is, oh, is this the artist? Uh, background is Monta Gold Painting is all acrylic and liquid liquid chrome on the phone. Yeah. Yeah, that's the artist. I'm pretty sure. Thanks for joining us. You're awesome. Your work's awesome. It was very, it's very cool. And you can hear Sean, right? I just missed her design. I'll wait for him to respond. Yeah, so that's a great piece. Um, I like the pop, the very, uh, the cartoonist, but like the very childlike feel that it brings. It is like a tantrum. That's funny that you said that. Yeah, no, no, that's one of my, it's one of my favorite pieces by Matt. Um, okay, so when we move on to this BAM one, let me reverse my camera. <laughs> Okay, so this is called BAM, right? Yeah, this one's by uh, Cornell Bell Steele. He's also from Wichita, Kansas. Okay, so tell us a little bit about uh, this artist and this work. All right, so uh, Cornell is a self-taught artist, and uh, it's all very graffiti vibes with him, but super, super clean uh, all of his paintings, like all the designs and everything. I'm not exactly sure how he does it, but there's no overspray on anything he does. He just keeps it crisp and clean. And uh, he really focuses on pop art. Um, oh, gosh. It's it's hard to explain a bit, but uh, it, it has a intimacy level to it and just about all of his paintings that like no matter where it is in the room it just catches your eye more than most pieces i've seen and he also uh covers nearly all of his pieces in a uh, resin as well yeah i could see the gloss from the top that's cool yeah so like this one specifically it just really gave me the feel of uh old comic books that like a lot of people would collect when they're younger and so forth, but being so uh, generic that you don't know where it came from, but really it's the painting that's speaking the story itself. Yeah, so it's kind of a fun little mix. It's got this, like, because of the strong of the reds and the teals, it's got this strong, like, super Euro rescue, like, comic book vibe, like you said. Yeah, and the yeah, eyes, definitely. the eyes are very like you know strong and forceful. And but I do I do agree with what you said because the the dots I can't place it, but it reminds you of those like comic strips or like those girls, like um in those advertisements that have that in the background. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the half tone nature. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And what's the size of this piece? Um, I actually don't know the size of this piece. Uh, judging from his work, he goes anywhere from about, I think 18 by 24 is the smallest work he does, but he goes up to 30 by 40, sometimes even bigger. I've seen some of his pieces that are four foot by four foot. Yeah. This one, uh, it's currently hanging up at a wave, a local venue for, uh, concerts and so forth. Oh, that's so cool. It's pretty neat. That is cool. Um, and then, yeah, I think, uh, and then, and these, yeah, it's very pop related. Um, the first three are curated really well together in, in that nostalgic memory type of uh, theme. Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited to see the next one. So we'll keep going. So now we have this. Uh, oop. There we go. This is like a Mickey here. So tell us about this one. All right. So uh, this artist is one I actually, uh, it's called Noriaki. I found him on Instagram and I don't know much about him, but the artwork itself spoke to me so much. Um, he implied, he, uh, what's it called? Supersedes these eye shapes 
in place of entire faces for characters from Mickey Mouse like that to the Lacoste um, logos, Polo logos, Nike. Uh, he's done so many pop characters like Pikachu and things like that. But uh, the eye itself, it's minimalistic in its approach, yet it's so powerful. It's like the characters are just staring right into your soul. Yeah, the, like the all-seeing eye. That's what it reminds exactly. me. Exactly. Exactly. And this piece itself, uh, I had the artist choose one that he deemed would fit the uh, subject well. And the Mickey Mouse he chose, uh, it's great. And like the little bit of gum on his shoe is just kind of uh, poking fun at the perfect world of Disney as well. Yeah. Which, uh, if you've ever visited, uh, I love the place. It's awesome. But uh, it, it can get pretty chaotic there. So. Yeah, that it's, is yeah. that is a cute like a like a interesting way to play on the you know the imperfections of even something as perfect as in our minds as Disneyland or Disney World. Yeah, exactly. And that exactly. the dot in the right, top right corner is an interesting like for the to create the the depth space like the the composition. So I thought yeah. that was interesting. Yeah, and he in the works that I've seen, he typically doesn't do that very often. He did it for a few of them, but yeah, it, it creates nice depth of feel. And I'm pretty certain this piece uh, is all spray paint. Yeah, <coughs> and I like how it's it's faded, like it's not as the the black of the ears and the the neck of the like the mouse is faded into the image yeah and this one is 20 by 24 in size it's the original kinda, it kind of almost is like a because of the right dot with the dots around it it's kind of like a mirage into the reminds me of like a mirage into the character on the forefront yeah exactly no this is yeah. unique it's very it's very a unique approach to characters like that. I've never seen something like this. Yeah, and it just shows again how social media can really uh, get your work out to the most random of people. Like, I believe this artist is, uh, I think I saw somewhere he might be from Japan, I believe. So having someone from Kansas just randomly stumbling upon his work. Yeah. was a very happy convenience. Exactly. And I think that's also how, well, that may have be how we, we've definitely, that's how we keep in touch through social media, like me and you. So it's crazy. I think it, it's such a powerful tool, but you have to be careful, you know, the, the consequences, whether positive or negative, that anything has. It's all balance. Yeah, exactly. So, I'll, and- um, yeah, go ahead. I was just saying, man, it's like this show being a digital exhibition. It's the same way. You just have to use technology to your favor whenever you can. Exactly. There's always a way to create opportunities, especially as an artist. Um, You just have to think outside the box most of the time. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I'll go to the next one. This is a a fun one. This this, uh, princess here, Snow White. Yeah. So who, who's, what's the artist, who's the artist for this work? All right, so uh, this is uh, by James Snuffer, which he is, let's see, I believe he is from, oh gosh, it's the South United States. I, I want to stay somewhere in Oklahoma, okay. I believe. I just don't know his exact stomping ground. But uh, this piece, uh, it's titled uh, Snow White Has a Thing for Chanel. <laughs> and yeah, it, uh, his work, it's its very super flat yeah. movement, but very, very powerful. And I like how he uh, kept her skin just completely White. no pigments to it. Yeah. Yet everything else is so vibrant that she's just like a ghost of a memory. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. 
And the little heart that's on her, uh, like on above her chest, that's interesting placement. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Almost like it's a tattoo. And then she has her giant Chanel ring on her finger. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. No, the stars with the... Yeah, that's a good because the the skin with the stars make it flat, but then the the puff of the sleeve with the two stripes bring it forward. So it's a cre- a creative piece. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And how her skin is melting off of her body is another. Oh, I didn't notice very, that until now. Very interesting take. But uh, James's uh, Instagram is called uh, Snuffer Secret Stash. Which uh, all of these works are give off the pop art feel. Yeah. But uh, his older works were more uh, abstract, almost modern, postmodern feel to them. Yeah. So it's a completely different take for his artwork. And I'm a I'm a huge fan of his pop art movement. That's cool. I actually uh, I own another piece of his of a uh, evil Charlie Brown, <laughs> and that's what got me uh, linked to him. Yeah. They're connecting with him. Mm-hmm. That is a cool piece. I, I like the and I like the the red tones in the the cape. Yeah, yeah, he definitely uh, did it right. And I don't know the exact dimensions on this piece. I don't have a note of that. Okay, um, we'll go to the next one. Uh, this one's unique. Look at these guys. This is the photo? Uh, no, it's an oil painting. That's an oil painting? Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, by Toddy Holt, and she's out of, uh, uh, what is it, Ventura Beach, California. Uh-huh. And she, she paints super realism. Her work is insane to see uh, on a computer or in person. Uh, you you would expect it's a photograph, but uh, it's definitely not. It's all oil paints. Wow. How did you, this... you find her work? Um, I exhibited with her twice at Super Fine Art Fair okay. in uh, Miami and uh, L.A. And this is a piece that was hanging in L.A. Wow, that's insane. Like, look at that, the detail. It looks like I thought it was a photo, like you said. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. tell us a little bit of the um, the you know the selection of this piece. Yeah, so uh, this one dives way back in history. Uh, the, I think they're called sleep stacks. It's from a, an old TV show out of the '60s or '70s, and I mean, I, I don't know how it inspires her life or what made her decide to paint this subject itself, mm-hmm. but it just. Uh, it, it just yells vintage toys and everyone has experienced toys that they've loved throughout their history, I'm sure. And yeah, uh, I don't know. It, I, this one just really caught my eye. I didn't want to leave it out. Yeah. Especially, especially for its quality. And I like the, cause of the vintage with the, pa- the, the sleek sack, the ones that's in the package. Cause a lot of people are collectors and they just collect and leave everything in the boxes. So that's a, exactly. that's a childhood, like a, a memory of collecting like the Ninja Turtles or the dolls and you leave them in the the packaging. Yeah, and it's like connecting childhood to adulthood because the children want to play with everything, but the adults want to make money. Yeah, and they want to <laughs> save it as a, you know, valuable property. Mm-hmm. And did she do a series of these or is this just one of the, the this this work um you know i she's done so many paintings i don't know if she does them as series themselves but uh there are a few others that uh, deal with vintage toys that i've seen okay and do we have a dimension on these um oh goodness i think this one is around i want to say 24 by 24 oh wow yeah so it's a good size a medium yeah the, and yeah, then the feet uh, and the hands remind me of, remember, like, when you were a kid, like, the kernel, the corn candy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that's that's super funny. This is bringing me back. 
This is a good one. And then now with all the aliens, you know, it reminds me of that too. So the alien movies when you were a kid and all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. And seen, like this I've piece spoke to me show. because yeah. I, uh, I, I have a super fascination with the vintage, vintage TV shows from the 60s where you can see the wires hanging everything up to like the spaceships flying around. Yeah, this is crazy. What do you guys think of this one? This is a very realist, realism fo- uh, paint, oil painting, but mm-hmm. it's almost like a photograph. It's a fun one. And I love the vibrant colors. This is a great composition. So if we don't have any thoughts or comments, we can move to the next one. We have a couple more artists left. Um, let's see. This was uh, one of the artworks on the flyer oh i have a we have a comment very cool we just installed a new sculpture at the museum i work with uh, some old okay so he said that on this one uh they just installed a sculpture at the museum that he works at and has some old toy vibes so it's kind of like what it reminds me him of so that's cool so i guess that's a thing bringing back vintage toys into work Works oh yeah, no, it definitely, definitely is. I've had a few clients uh, commission uh, photographs of old toys for me, even. Really? Yeah, it's the postmodern vibes of it. That's like true. people like remembering. Yeah, that's true. The memories, I'll, you know, and uh, still, you know, you can create it as a, it's technically like the still life, a different way to see still mm-hmm. lives. That's cool. Okay, so let's go back to uh, this one. This was uh, on the flyer. One of the images on the flyer. I thought this was very uh, cool. Let's talk about who the artist is and uh, (laughs) the type of work that we're seeing. Yeah, so this one is by uh, uh, Aaron uh, Jackson Bowman. He's uh, from the Wichita area as well, and I believe the title is Dig Dug Girl. Dig Dug Girl? Yeah, and okay. um, this one, uh, I, I don't know how many people have played video games from like the 90s, 80s, 90s. It came from an old video game, uh, Dig Dug, I believe. Oh, but okay. uh, just the introduction of that as a tire for this uh super abstracted girl monkey whatever you see in it um it just reminded me of how like think of any clothing store like hot topic or anything else really capitalizes off of putting old video games on t-shirts once again just remembering the nostalgia of the past but uh this one uh if I'm correct, I think the artist is here. He might be able to explain it better. It's uh, either acrylic or oil paint yeah. or a combination of the two. And I think it might be pastel as well. That's awesome. So the actual um, game or the image is on the shirt and the person is just uh, like the figure. So like the character on the shirt is the reference of the game that you mentioned. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, I, so the artist uh, said it's both acrylic and oil. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, the texture in it on just about all of his work is one of my favorite parts because it has that kind of uh, figurative, uh, not figurative, gestural approach to it. Yeah. Yeah, it just pulls it off nicely. And like the video game character being so crisp is a, it just it reminds me of screen printing so much yeah this is a really good composition like you said I, like i'm i'm personally drawn to impressionist work so the quick brush strokes above the head and the the body and the the, the whole composition of the shirt is really like you know abstract and impressionist so i i'm really drawn to this one it's really cool yeah yeah definitely and is that a tat like a gib is that a gib the GIB is that a tattoo on the shoulder? Do you see um, that? 
Uh, if we look at the person's shoulder, I can zoom in. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. I don't know what logo that's from. I maybe, assume it's a logo. Maybe it's But it his. almost looks like a person's face. Oh, okay. But you see the AI, AGB. Maybe that's his uh, signature. That's a unique way to incorporate oh, that. Oh, yeah, that, that totally makes sense. He said, I sign with a stamp. That's really cool. That's his signature. I That's unique. I've not seen that. I like that. Aaron, good job. <coughs> that's very cool. That's the first time you noticed it, Sean, right? Yeah, yeah, I had no idea what that was before I said that. That's super funny. I didn't put that together. That's cool. No, I like this is awesome. And I, I think that's interesting the use of the the yellow above the shoulder to the black. It's a really yeah. cool piece. Anyone have any other comments and we can go to the next one, but this is an awesome piece. Very, uh, very cool. So if we go to the next one, this was the other work that was next to it on the flyer for the show. This is just so dynamic. Do you want to talk to us about the artist and the selection for this piece? Yeah, so this is, uh, Abby Salami, she's uh, from Dallas, Texas, and it's a mixture of painting and collage. She just came out with a book of this series itself, I believe. You can find that on her Instagram. But the piece in itself was a huge uh, connection to uh, photo books that, like, every parent has ever collected to remember every memory of their kids growing up. Oh, yeah. But with this piece in itself, the figures are more about Black history, I believe. Okay. I'm going to try to and zoom in. So he's talking about the, the, the collage on the shirt. Okay, continue. Yeah, and like the expressions uh, on everyone's faces throughout the shirt, they hit every end of the spectrum uh, of emotions to me. You have the different people working. You have the people kind of sad and depressed, the super happy ones. Um, but I don't know. It's just like the figure, the painting itself is in awe of everything that's going on throughout the collage portion. Mm -hmm. like and it. then those crazy sunglasses are a pretty nice touch as well. Yeah. I can't get over the, the purple lips. Like that purple is so, it's so like saturated, it stands out to the, to the face, like to the portrait skin tone. That's, yeah. That's gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And this one, uh, I don't remember if it's pastel or acrylic or oil. I believe it's a painting on top of the collage. Okay. But the background's definitely painted. I know that. Yeah, and she did a series of these, um, like you said, of these memory collages. And that's true because, like, you know, folk people have photo albums, but it's more of like a photo album of, like, history to her. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, this is a cool one. I think it's very rich and it has a lot of a lot of uh, deep meanings. I'm not sure what the meaning is of the sunglasses. Maybe to block or to not be able to see everything. But well, for for me, the sunglasses and the shirt, the shape of the shirt, it's it has the feel of fashion throughout time. And, like, the sunglasses have an almost futuristic feel to them. Yeah, like Even though the shirt future. is talking about history, it's really going from, like, the past to the present to the future. It's just like a timeline throughout everything in my eyes. Well, that's a really great perspective. That is true. Yeah, and it's like looking into the future, you know, for change. Yeah, and almost looking into the future blindly because you can't see anything through the glasses. Yeah, like by faith almost. Uh-huh. Yeah, I love this work. It's it's awesome. And where's the, what's the artist's Instagram? Uh, let me find that. I believe it's her name. 
Let's see. All right, so it's ABI period M period S A L A M I, and that's uh, that's her Instagram name, and you can see a huge amount uh, of other pieces from the series throughout here. She also does some other works of uh, bodies uh, and pieces, uh, kind of like uh, I believe Magritte. Okay, yeah, that's cool. I just you know she and she might. She might, uh, did she have schooling? Uh, yeah, I, I, I met her at uh, Superfine Miami, and I believe she has uh, a degree in graphic design, I want to say, something like that, kind of like what I do. But yeah. she's been doing uh, this painting for quite some time, and she actually uh, teaches some courses on it as well, cool. from what I've seen. Very cool. I think it's cool the the usage of the color. That's what draws me to this this work, and then the collage is a story, the you know the narrative. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So let's go to the next one. Um, this is a really good curated next to the last one we saw with the vibrant colors. It's like looks like the two figures on like sitting down, on a couch. All right, so yeah, this one is uh, Nick Drake's work, and it's actually, uh, his process is incredibly fascinating. Uh, he actually, uh, it's a photograph on top of numerous photographs, but he actually uses his uh, DJ mixer to manipulate the, the photographs, the digital photographs, to uh, create it as glitch art. Really? And this is a new movement where he's really uh, superimposing multiple photographs on top of each other with the same process. So does and, he use the, the mixer or does he play like the sound and the sound interrupts the process? So I, I don't know the specifics on it just from what he's explained to me. He somehow puts the photograph as its uh, visual file into a uh, mixing program and oh. he uses... Uh, his DJ equipment to, uh, yeah, no, he's talking now. Yeah. Um, he says he uses an audio editor to import the images as raw data and then manipulates them through that program. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. His, uh, the last time I showed him in my gallery back home in Wichita, his work sold out. What's his, uh, where is he located? Where are you located? Uh, Wichita, Wichita, Kansas. Okay, okay. He goes, then I add audio effects like reverb delay and filters to affect the sound data then out but that's so unique as an image i've never seen that before that is so cool yeah it's uh it's really eye-catching so he starts with the photo then does that process and then um is the the pigment is it like acrylic uh it's uh it's printed digitally oh, it's, it's a photograph it's, it's a photograph okay so it's photograph yeah. that is insane I love the neon yeah. and vibrance of the colors, too, and the abstract uh, positions that the people came in. He goes... Yeah, the people speak directly to him as well. He just read another comment I was about to address. Uh, yeah, there are pictures of his brother, his dad, and his uncle in one. That's cool. That, and how long has he been? Um, he said you you had a show of his work and near you in, in Kansas, and um, he's been doing this for a while. Yeah, yeah, he's a graphic designer by trade. Yeah, and then uh, he does uh, a lot of artwork as well. But yeah, the show that I hosted him in was a year or so ago, and, where, and he's really kept up with the series. And where do people? Does he have an Instagram? Yeah, let me. And after after this, when we host the, um, we'll, we uh, will rehost the show online, and we'll have all the artist links on there, so it's you know everyone can find where the artists are in the show. Yeah, it's Nick Drake Design. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's it. Nick Drake Design on Instagram. Cool job. This is really neat. I like the 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 largeness of the head. 
And then the tree, the composition of the tree in the back. And he also provided us his website on this chat, which is currently down, but you can at least see his work on Instagram for now. Very neat. How big is this print or this photo? Uh, I don't know. How big is it, Nick? <laughs> you talking. got this. <laughs> yeah, what is it? I hope to see his work in, uh, all over Miami. This is very cool. 12 inches by 10. Cool. It's a smaller size. <laughs> oh, it's okay. We thank you for uh, showing this work. It's very neat. Um, I really like this. Do you have any other things before we move to the next one? Um, no, not... Not really. I mean, like, we haven't really talked about the composition of the image or anything, but it kind of speaks for itself. Uh, it has the vibes of uh, a dream. Yeah. To where you can't really connect anything to another, yet you know something's there. And the person sitting down on the couch on the left is one of my favorite parts because it's almost like they're getting erased out of the picture. Yeah. That is neat. It is like a, a mem it's a faded dream or a memory. Like, you know, when you have a dream in the morning, you wake up and you're like, I know people were in it, but I can't remember what happened. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's funny how the mind works. So we'll go to the next one. Um, this is unique. Tell us about this guy. Or this king, right? Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm waiting for it to... Okay, so, uh, yeah, this one is by uh, Molly Goldfarb out of New York City. And uh, so it's an actual... The white background is a wall. Her canvases are actually cut to the size of that shape. They're very, very unique canvases. Yeah. And she uh, typically does these... Uh, I think they're acrylic or gouache paintings. Super highly pigmented. Or she also does a uh, digital um, drawings as well, but they all translate to each other amazingly. But this uh, this painting itself, the reason I chose this is because it has the feelings of playing cards yeah. and how fun all those card games could be. Maybe not anymore if you get overplayed by that, but uh, for me, I've always just enjoyed the feeling of that and then like her color spectrum on her works it's always all over the place but it works perfectly i really enjoy it i especially like the kind of uh the crown around the neck whatever you want to call that the coloration of how it's completely different than the face itself so it gives it even more dimension yeah like the beard yeah the beard. yeah that's true like the pattern the pastel looking pattern to the neon beard vibrant like uh out of the tube type color to the bottom past like that type of fabric and pattern is unique how it works in this yeah. space and this one was actually displayed at uh spectrum miami during basil That's so as well cool. Did this she last have a, december a bunch of different uh characters like this uh, yeah, she does. And uh, I would definitely uh, suggest checking out her digital work as well. She does these scenes uh, made up, but from memories of places she's visited that are just, oh man, I, I, I own one of them. I, I love staring at it all the time. It's just crazy, unreal situations that might actually be real life situations, yeah. but they're just all out of her head. It does, and even this character looks like it could be a landscape. Yeah, yeah, definitely. With the the green underneath the the cheek and the the use of the beard to the collar. Yeah, and how the nose almost resembles a house. Yeah. With the chimney, I could definitely see that, and the eyes almost the sky. are like mountain tops. Yeah, that's really neat. And I love how she used the blue mostly in the center and then everything else. It's very well done. Yeah. I do we have a like size it. on this one? 
Uh, let's see. This one's pretty big. I, I want to say it's probably uh, in the range of like 20 by 30 or so. Wow. Except uh, it's a unique cut canvas. So it's really hard to put a dimension on it. No, that's cool. Let's see if I can find an exact. And she's out of New York. And did she have did she have schooling or is she self taught? Um, uh, she does have schooling. Uh, let's see. She actually. I think she owns a design company or an art company. Uh, her tag is uh, Create Dangerously. Okay. Create Dangerously. I like it. Very, yeah. uh, very out there, but it it's composed well. Yeah, and like just uh, if you ever have the chance to meet the actual artist itself too, she's one of the nicest people I've met. Very humble. That's awesome. And she's doing it in New York. That's awesome. I know, I know. It's something I heard doesn't happen that often. No, it's a blessing <laughs> when it does. So I'm going to zoom yeah. out, and then you can see. I like how those are curated together. And then going around the room. Um, and then we have a few more that didn't make the upload for the gallery because of the technology glitches. So um, I'm going to go to the file. And then I guess tell me, I'm going to look. We have this uh, opera space one that's loading. Yeah, yeah, Dallas Dodge's piece. That's loading now on the screen. Let me know when you see it. Is this, this is a collage. Uh, yeah, you might zoom out a bit. It's kind of cut off on the bottom. Uh, I can't zoom out anymore. Alright. Hold on. Let's see. How's that? I try to go as far as up as I could. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know if any... Uh, I moved it a down. little. Yeah, that's... Uh, that's nearly the whole piece. So I'll just tell you about it. Uh, yeah, no, that's, yeah, that's good. All right. So uh, this is uh, Dallas Stodge's piece. It's called uh, 2001, a space opera. And uh, it's all photo collage. <coughs> and uh, he did this uh, series of surreal uh, situations uh gosh years ago he's been he's been an artist since 70s 80s uh dealing in uh, digital collage uh, mixed media sculpture ceramics everything he's just been a wow it kind of reminds me of a dolly type of scene yeah yeah, I could definitely see that. Like uh, so the reason I chose this piece above all his other pieces is because it's, for me personally, it's about creating memories rather than living through them. Uh, it's the sense of dreaming. It's the sense of aspiring to do what you want to do. And it's a very random mix of objects to say the least, but somehow they all work together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, but yeah, it's a unique, just uh, having the opera singer as a spaceship in itself. Yeah. It's one of my favorite touches. And then the, the, the arms missing on the one side, but that's like a shield. And then the, yeah, man, uh, the man yeah it's on... almost a shield or it's like an astronaut's mask. Yeah. And, then, and like Dallas is very much into uh aliens as well. So it's uh it's just another aspect of space travel and all that. Yeah. But yeah, overall it's one of my favorites of okay. his collage works. That's cool. It does remind me like I think the foreground with um the the mountains, <coughs> like the the uh, landscape is very like surrealist 
the whole thing, the collages, but that one, that particularly has like a Dolly in, inspiration to me. Yeah, yeah, no, I can, I can definitely see it. It. Uh, and this is a, this is a uh, photo collage. Yes, yes, and uh, the size on this one. Let me find it. Let's see. I just uh, documented his entire life work oh, you did. a while ago, so I have pictures of everything, but for some reason, I don't have the dimensions on it. I want to say it's around 11 by 14. Okay. That's interesting. You did a documentary or a, like a document on his life. I I took photographs of his works from college to present day. That's uh, that's interesting. So I got to see over two hundred and eighty some different works by him. Wow! And his uh, his journey in the arts throughout his life has been very very fascinating. At some point, I want to make a book of it. Yeah. I just need to find the time to do it. That'd be cool. And the story behind it. Yeah. Yeah, and he's quite a character, too. It's, it's titled a space opera. Which is, cool. is he like a, is he a music guy, or is it just um, the opera is just another reason why maybe he picked that as the object? Um. Well, he's, I don't know, he, he likes music for sure. I don't know if he has a history in it or anything like that. But uh, he definitely has interest in, like, space and aliens and the surreal and, like, the 60s, 70s pop art vibes. Yeah, you definitely so see it. So it all, all just kind of comes together. I love the colors of the orange tones. Those yeah, very Mars-like. Yeah. And then I think we we have a Adam Christopher where we have to show. Yeah, okay. yeah. Is this uh that's a painting, right? Yeah, it's an oil painting. Uh, Adam Christopher Reed, and I exhibited with him in uh Wash Superfine Washington D.C. Okay. And let's see. Sorry, I'm pulling up the image. Uh, I have to go to the right more. To cut off. Yeah, go to the right a bit. Okay. Should have fixed it. But yeah, just to tell you a little bit about uh, <coughs> Adam, uh, he's from, uh, oh gosh, uh, the New England region, I think West Virginia. And he comes from an artist family from what he was telling me. And he creates these still lives uh, just with random objects and all that and paints them uh, with oil paints. But uh, the level of quality on them is, or yeah, I think it's just shifted to the left. I'm trying. It's a yeah, no worries. Uh, but yeah, he uh, he creates all these images and like the color palette he uses, every color and it just really pops off the next and it creates these super deep paintings. He, uh, he has focused on uh, clothing and blankets a lot, but he adds in things like skulls and sunglasses the sunglasses whereas the nostalgia aspect of this one i especially liked mm -hmm. but just how it becomes a person in itself as well it almost has a nun like quality okay so i open the photo let me know if you could see that better yeah no it looks good okay but yeah his uh his color palette he uses on these it's almost like super vibrant but with like a filter on it that creates it to more, it's like toxic feeling colors, yet it always works. 
Yeah, it's, and it's it's work that you really have to see in person to get the biggest uh, impression from, but uh, it translates uh, digitally quite well, too. No, it's cool. I really, uh, it's different. I think the face that he makes with the objects and knowing it's a still life, he has a really great uh, sense of uh, light, light, like a sense of light in his work with the the shadows off the tones. Like he's really into the tone of the fabric. Which, yeah, which makes it uh, like a you know you beautiful painter because of the way he captures lighting and shadows. Yeah, yeah, he really. Uh... His level of expertise in painting is fascinating. And just like the texture on the uh, the blanket that's over, the red blanket over the yellow yeah. one, the texture on that, that's almost like velvet, but it has fingerprints in it. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. I don't know if I could ever do that. It's a very, like a realist type of training, like portraiture training to do... Yeah, and I believe he does have a BFA or a bachelor's in uh, art as well. Out of what state? Or you don't know? I, I believe he's from West Virginia. Yeah, that's nice. Well, where can people find his work? <coughs> uh, his uh, He has an Instagram account, and uh, it's actually uh, Reed Adam Christopher. Very cool. His things, his is his is fun. His work, and then yeah. we have two more. Uh, we have your your work, which should load uh, the uh, Jimmy V. Yeah, this is just one of my favorites from my Fading Identity series. Uh, it's Jimi Hendrix, and uh, the lines throughout everything. It's about the memories actually fading away, and no one. Uh, being able to remember every minute detail of the celebrities, yet no one wants to forget them. So the image is always there no matter what. Yeah. It just may not be translated exactly how the original entity was. I'm trying to get the whole image. This is a cool one. Okay, yeah, you can it's, see uh, it now. It's been a real fun series. I actually... Uh, I'm starting a new process utilizing glitter as in place of the color and adding uh, multiple layers of resin to give it depth. So you'll be interested <laughs> to see where it's at in a year from now. Oh, you're still working on this one, like manipulating it? Uh, that one itself, uh, each of the celebrities, I make 20 different designs, uh -huh. uh, uh, 20 different colorations. So uh, this one is number five of 20. And it, I think the whole series on this one is up to seven or eight. But uh, I will be making one in the uh, series of 20 with the glitter. No, that would be cool. And I love the um, the light blue in the top left. And the, the, the pattern, the play on the patterns is really strong in your work. Especially in yeah, this series. Yeah, the uh, background is predominantly just uh, a characteristic of... Uh, memories i have associated with the main point of interest the uh, jimmy hendrix uh, it was from uh, one of his albums really connected to it that's cool because it you can kind of see the music like the vibrations of the time the way you painted the blues and the purples and the dark purples in the back is very feels very musically inspired yeah yeah 100 percent. i'm always blasting music when i'm painting <laughs> as well so it's very possible my inspiration is from music oh that's cool oh and what's the size on oh it's 16 by 16 yeah yeah this one's 16 by 16 i make them up to six feet by six feet wow you do six feet by six feet on these that's insane how how long does the process take uh to design them uh, it takes me anywhere from a month to two months and then the painting step in it, that only takes me about two, three days. Yeah. And if I add resin, layers of resin to it, that adds anywhere from a week to two weeks. Wow. It's a process. 
Yeah. And you can really see him coming forward in front of the background, the background design. You're, you can see your graphic inspiration, like your graphic design influence in the way you process your work. Oh, uh, yeah, 100%. I tell everyone it's a mixture of technology and tradition because uh, all of these are made on a computer and then uh, translated onto wood panels yeah. and painted by hand. Wow. So it's everything. And that's cool because this shows art and technology. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So let me go to the, what's cool is like going to the last one, yours is about music. And then this is a, a piece that was, uh, that I did that was inspired by a music album. It was a commission piece. Um, so it's cool because yours was about an artist. And then this is uh, influenced by Wu-Tang, the, uh, the, RZA album, one of the RZA albums. So this is, uh, as you can see, uh, graffiti oil on wood. And it's four feet by four feet. And it was a commission piece. And like, kind of like similar, similar to yours, it was influenced from a musical artist. Um, you know, hip hop inspired rap <coughs> piece. So it's got this uh, very primal, um, and music inspired kind of different artists inspire this work but you have like um it's a from an album cover and yeah. as you can see on the the left is the a wu-tang symbol but it's you know blended in with the background of the, the the character in the front which is like the young king so it was just a fun piece that was very musically inspired with you know my own um take on entrepreneurship and hustling I guess because that's what the 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 artist inspired. So that's what this is, and I, I use a lot of the uh, primary colors when creating this work. Um, so I thought this was a cool piece. It ended up yeah. it closed really well. Like it closed really well, so I was happy about that. Yeah, and one of the reasons that uh, I chose it for this show is because uh, I didn't even realize the Wu Tang symbol was in there at all yeah. but uh just the overall feels of like the graffiti and the uh, figure in the middle it uh reminded me of action figures but also kind of mixed in basquiat into everything yeah especially with all the little green faces that are almost stenciled or doodled in the bottom center yeah it uh yeah it just it it filled a spectrum for me it's like it's going throughout history of different pop icons. Exactly. That's that's exactly right with the Basquiat and the uh, the those different artists inspired different parts of this piece. So yeah, you saw it as an action figure, which could have gone with the whole action figure of the vintage toys, but at at the same time, it goes along with the Jimmy with the music scene. Exactly. So we had a, yeah, exactly. a really cool. Um, uh, Looking back at the, the curation, we had a really great um, mix of artists that brought in their unique sense of nostalgia for the show, whether it's um, Disney characters or social media or the toys. I think this is a really great curated um, show. Yeah, thank you much. So, yeah, it was yeah, really so fun all, to do, that's for sure. Yeah, all the artists. It was so cool. I, you know, I would love to see, like, uh, there's so many vibrant pieces. Seeing them in the, the like, a storefront would have been just like this. But, you know, we're online. <laughs> but I... Exactly. But it, as, in general, there, um, with all the artists, thank you for, like, curating the, the show, Sean. And um, we'll have these... Uh, We'll have these uh, the list of the artworks and the artists in a link shortly uh, that will be archived, so you can always refer back to this and see the pieces. And we want to connect with all the artists because that's the point um, is to engage with artists from around the world, no matter where we are. We want to do these virtual art shows to engage in conversation and curate exhibitions like this scale. Um, again, the artists. Uh, we're from locally to New York, so to Texas, to Florida. So we're all over 
But with the power of technology, we're able to connect and have these awesome exhibit and art shows. Um, Sean, uh, where can people find your gallery information? Just so we'll list it later, but I just wanted you to say something about that. Yeah, so my gallery is a uh, Hugh Gallery of Contemporary Art. It's based in Wichita, Kansas, but we also uh, do uh, art fairs throughout the country from New York to Miami to LA. Um, you can find information on the gallery. It's HughWichita.com, which is H U E and then W I C H I T A.com. Or you can find us on Instagram or Facebook as well. Awesome. Well, we're so happy to have you. Again, um, the host, the Wandering Mass Masters Art Salon, holds monthly uh, virtual art exhibitions to encourage art com connections and shows from all over. No matter if you don't aren't able to physically see the work in person, and a lot of these artists we met through, or Sean met through social media and Instagram. So it goes to show you the power of a photo. And now being able to take it virtually is that next step to, you know, meeting and meeting the artists in a more personal level and understanding their work. So thank you so much. And uh, we'll have this up on ProvokeArtChannel.com as well as on this Twitch stream. So thank you guys for joining us. And um, Sean, thanks for, for curating and being amazing and uh being with us today and uh we're probably going to close out now unless anyone has any other questions but thank you to all the artists for their work and keep creating you're doing amazing and we wish nothing but success for all these artists yeah, definitely. all right so thank you guys and uh thanks sean yeah no problem talk to you guys soon